join us here. Alex, how you doing, my brother? Hello, hello, hello. Happy to join. How are you? I'm doing great, man. I can't complain. I got my NFT, by the way, from Star yeah. Atlas. Thank you for uh, for that drop. Appreciate good, that. Good, good. That was good. That was good. That was good. So talk to me a little bit. You got into crypto back in 2016, and I want to I want to ask you about it because one of the things that I run into with my show is you know we have to educate a lot of people about this because it, there's an intimidation factor. There's this fud factor that we have to deal with you know like i'll get on the chat board and somebody say well bitcoin's a fad bitcoin's a ponzi scheme bitcoin's this bitcoin's that so what made you get into it and how did you cross that threshold of being intimidated and understanding that this is really the future yeah well, look first of all thanks for uh for having me on your show i'm a big fan of South Florida specifically. I have a lot of good friends that went to FIU. I've been down in Miami all the time. We're big supporters of Miami, the mayor, uh, from an Oka coin perspective uh, and from a personal perspective. Sure. I, th I think you ask a good question. And for your uh, for your audience, I, I maybe I'll give a little bit of a long-winded answer, but I really feel very passionately about this. And so my, my background is in business. Uh, I've uh, I have an MBA. I've kind of studied business and finance my whole career. And very recently, or um, and I studied technology, and you know, I'll explain to you why this matters. When I was at Microsoft, I was tasked with writing uh, the blockchain strategy, which is the fundamental technology that Bitcoin and others sit on. And when I studied it, it was like the matrix. You know, when you look at the matrix or, or the movie, the matrix or when Neo takes the pill and then the world changes and you right, see right. the world for something different. Right. Uh, and it takes, I think, um, especially for, for the people that have been, you know, either experienced in life in a certain per perspective or highly educated, it takes people, the humbleness, right? It really humbled me to put away a lot of the things that I've learned and to try to see a world from a new perspective. And for your audience, I want to say this, and I don't mean this, this is not an exaggeration. And I mean this in a very well thought out, very well researched perspective. Crypto is the biggest shift in generational and like a generational wealth shift, the biggest investment opportunity that we've had in the last 1000 years. And we will be lucky to have another opportunity like this in our lifetime. And I, and I really wholeheartedly believe this. And, and so here, here's kind of why. By the way, I'm with, by the way, I'm with you, and I'm thinking of the gold rush. It, it, the it's exactly time. what it is. The last time, the last time. <clears throat> it's exact. It's exactly what it is. Except we don't we don't have to you know filter stuff and go into mountains and and rivers and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. It's a different kind of mining that's going on nowadays. But go ahead. It, I'm sorry. Exactly. No, it's a different kind of mining. But you know, you say, hey, look, you we, you and I have talked, uh, pri you know, privately, and I've kind of helped you navigate the world. Yes. Uh, this is an aside, and you're saying, "Hey, I'm just getting used. To, I'm getting. Uh, I'm getting used to this." And I told you, you're the Jedi Master. I'm the Jedi Master. <laughs> <laughs> and and for the people out there that haven't been uh, are not used to this, it is a little complicated now. And this is because we're so early. If it was easy, you wouldn't have the same kind of gains. But the gains are real. And so let's let's go back and understand why there's so many gains and what is crypto. Cryptocurrencies and specifically Bitcoin. So, for if you're a beginner, focus on Bitcoin. Forget everything else for now, right? Once you get a little bit deeper into it, you can focus on a lot of the other assets, and we can talk about those. But if you're a beginner, Bitcoin allows you to have something called digital hard money. Okay, and so we have to think of money as a technology. Way back when we had seashells and we passed those around or stone tablets and then we got coins and then some kings would put a little bit less gold in their coins. It would be a little less pure. Some people had silver coins, copper, gold. Then we had paper money. Then we had, you know, uh, equities. Right. You had then you had money decoupled from gold. All of this are technological innovations of money. OK, and so think about. Uh, a book, right? You can take and flip a book. And then came the Kindle, where you can read a book, right, on an electronic device. Right. And then came a, you know, Audible, where you could listen to books as you're walking. The Kindle and the Audible took some time to get used to, but they are fundamentally better products than the book, which is the greatest 
technological gener you know invention since literally the bible the bible is made so you can open it go to a page because it was a torah before without going too deep into details you can open and close the book to whatever page right huge technological 2000 years right it held it was number one for 2000 years the kindle comes and it's now taking over the books right for especially the younger generations bitcoin and crypto is the same thing with money money was good it was paper money we've used it now we have digital hard money okay the blockchain works in a way that you can trust without trusting the other counterparty and that's a fundamental computer science breakthrough that we've never had and so what because of that you're able to say for bitcoin there are 21 million bitcoins and, and each bitcoin is a million satoshis think of it as a dollar and many many cents so you can break it it's it's infinitely divisible you can buy 0. 0.0001 bitcoin you can spend five dollars and buy whatever that is for you for bitcoin but there's only 21 million that are ever going to be made so while our government sits there and prints money just like and the European governments print money and the governments abroad print money, just print more and more and more. When you have more money coming into the system, your, your dollars are worth less. If Orlando, if you have 50 bucks and I have 50 bucks and you and I both share the world 50, 50, and then the government comes in and says, Oh, here's another hundred bucks for anybody out there. Your worth and my worth just decreased by half, yeah, just right. like that. And the government, I, I forgot the exact stat, but I think 40 to 50% of the current dollars in circulation right now have been printed in the last one and a half years. That's right. If that doesn't scare people, <laughs> right, without, it doesn't even matter what side are you on, Republican or Democrat. We had COVID and we needed to help and rescue people. We printed a lot of money. By the way, both, both presidents printed a lot of money, so it doesn't it, really matter. Exactly. It's, it's just the natural, when you decouple money in 1971, we decoupled it from gold. We talk about this a lot on the podcast. Before, when you had, let's, let's go back. When you were a king and you wanted to go conquer someone, you wanted to go start a war. You were like, oh, sh you know, I have this much of my treasury. If I waste all this money and I don't win the war, like I'm done. So right. I'm only going to spend money on positive ROI projects, so return on investment, projects that don't give me money back. Now, when you've decoupled money from gold, so the U.S. dollar, we, in, in God we trust, right? So, so in the dollar. And there's no gold backing it. There's some, but not, you know, we decoupled it in 1971. Now we can go spend money wherever we want. And if we run out of money, what do we do? We pr literally print more money, and now we have more dollars. B Bitcoin solves that. It's a digital gold. And here's what blew my mind when I started researching Bitcoin. We are very lucky. I wasn't born in this country. You know, Thanksgiving is coming up. So happy Thanksgiving to everyone. And for me, my family, Thanksgiving is probably the most important holiday for us. We're very thankful for America. I'm very thankful for this country. But all the beautiful things, freedoms it gives uh, that other countries don't allow. But many other countries out there, most other countries out there, have some sort of freedom-reducing mechanism, capital controls. You can't take X money out, right? Um you know, I, I have this as a side note, I have a story. I left the Soviet Union. And when we were leaving the Soviet Union, uh, my grandfather had this amazing coin collection. It was uh, silver rubles. And we literally couldn't take it out of the country. So he stuffed it in my pants. And I was a five-year-old boy, stuffed it in my jeans. And I remember going through the metal detectors in Frankfurt. We traveled through Frankfurt, through Germany. My pants are falling off, you know, and I'm kind of holding up my pants and I go through and the metal detector, of course, goes off and the, and the, and the security officer looks at me and he just kind of like, you know, shakes his head and, and smirks and lets the kid go through. But that is literally, we got lucky. That's the only way to take out a coin collection from a country. This happens in India, definitely in China, Argentina, Turkey, Venezuela, Colombia, pretty much the whole developing world. You cannot take your money out. Imagine not being able to take your wealth out. And it's hard for us in America to imagine this. And I'm going in this diatribe because I really want the listeners to, under to understand and put yourselves. And I think a lot of people in, you know, in South Florida have the perspective of obviously immigrants, right? Cuban, a lot of Cuban uh, Americans in there, the, the Cuban descendants uh, in South Florida, a lot of Latinos, you know, my, my wife, my family is half Latino. So I, I totally appreciate, especially in America, uh, what what some of the governments could do to you so now with bitcoin you have a you have your mind you have 12 words in your head 
With those 12 words, you don't have gold that someone can come and steal and put a gun to your head and say, give me your gold jewelry. You have 12 words in your head and no one knows whether you have those 12 words or not. And you can move your money around the globe with those 12 words memorized in your head and you can open up any wallet anywhere in the world and move money like this. That's never been done in the history of humankind. And this is exactly why Bitcoin is not a Ponzi scheme. And it's very volatile. Any new asset, look at Amazon. Look at the Amazon stock. It's fallen three or four times by 50% in the dot-com era, 90%. If you bought Amazon at the height of the dot-com era, it fell 90%. You would have, you would have been a millionaire today, okay, if you held on to Amazon. Same thing with Bitcoin. Yeah, I'll pause there. I want to I wanna give it back to you. I feel so passionately about this, especially having seen- I love it. I love your passion yeah. because, because I, I've, I've seen the light, you know? And I've, I understand what we're trying to accomplish here. We're trying to empower the human being, not the American, not the Canadian, exactly. not the Colombian, not the African, not the Cuban. No, no. We're trying to empower the human being. And, and you know, I, I, I give Venezuela as president a lot of credit for doing what he's doing because you Salvador, know, I mean, uh, Salvador, because he, he is saving his country like a lot of these countries that are, you know, we're headed in that direction with what we're doing with our dollar, but we've watched other countries that have destroyed their currency. And, and, and it's hard for us because w there are so many people that control and dictate who gets the money and who doesn't, who gets the loan and who doesn't. And, and crypto, what people don't understand, it's going to empower you to be able to be your own bank and you don't have to answer to the government or anybody else. And that's what people have to understand. And then, you know, l explain a little bit how Bitcoin is a hedge against inflation. Yeah. So so this, it, it, you know, it's, it's a great lead in. And I completely agree. It empowers the individual, the sovereign individual to take control of your wealth. There are some risks with that. Don't lose those 12 words. Right. Don't get hacked. He's talking but, about the keys, by the way, folks. For those of you that are not getting, when you when you open up an account, you will get twelve words, a key, and those those twelve words are it's the ultimate uh, lock, password. Yeah, yeah, passwords to get into your your uh, your portfolio. In other words, exactly. If you're on a centralized exchange like OKCoin, we take care of that for you. It's a login wow. and password, and we can talk about safety and two-factor authentication, how to be safe on the web in general. Um, but let's talk about how Bitcoin is a, is a hedge against inflation. So yes. inside the code of Bitcoin, which for all purposes cannot be changed, there's a caveat to this. For those of you who are pretty deep into crypto, you know, ask me, but for all purposes cannot be changed. It will never be changed. It's too big to change, like too big to fail. It's not too big to change. That's why Bitcoin open. open. Oop, your mic there. Wait a minute, your mic, your mic, your mic. Can you, your mic. Oh, he dropped. Okay. As it looks like he hit something and then, uh, and then it dropped him. It dropped the voice and then it dropped him. So we'll get him. We'll get him right back now. Alex Chizik, by the way, is the head of listings for OKCoin.com. You can find. Go to your app and you can download OKCoin. You can check it out. And by the way, Miami Coin, uh, you can get two hundred and eighty percent. Polygon is like at fifteen point four percent. Uh, polka dot so go check it out they've got a lot of great listings he's also got you know the host of the hardcore finance show alex is back alex go yeah, ahead no. you, were, you were answering that question about uh bitcoin how it is a hedge against inflation which i think in quarters three and four of next year we might be feeling some heavy heavy stuff but go ahead yeah Your sorry about that i i got excited okay. started talking my hands that's the italian that's not ever in me um so, so for all sorts and purposes, you cannot change the code of Bitcoin, okay? And so what happens is, as the government prints more money, traditionally, the best hedge against inflation has been gold. Why? There's a thing called the stock to flow model, basically is how much is made divided by how much is available. So the, 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 the lower that ratio is, the, the harder it is to make something, the more scarce it is. It's a finite amount, okay? 
But gold, we can mine more, we can get more. Their estimates in the next 10 years will increase our gold supply, I think, by 50%. The point is you can make more gold and you can find more gold. Then there was real estate, okay? And there is real estate, which is a great investment uh, for different reasons, but you can always build up. They're not scarce. There's more scarce than dollars, which you can print. Then there are equities, okay? So equities, where you can buy uh, different parts, stocks of a company, they're not scarce. A company can create more, but right. you're at least getting exposure to the upside. And the company grows and the economy grows, the company grows, so you get exposure there. So it's, it's a decent hedge, but it's not great. So we, we, we've, the hardest hedge we've ever had, the hardest money has been gold. And until now, Bitcoin is digital gold that's better than gold in every single way. First, it's 100% finite, okay? 21 million Bitcoin will ever be made, ever. And 19 million are pretty much already minted. So there's less and less ever made. Two, it's much more divisible. When next time you want to go and melt your golden earrings and then give a part of your golden earring to uh, uh, McDonald's to pay for a burger, you let me know, okay? Because you cannot do this now. So gold has been great, but you can't do this with Bitcoin. You literally can go to many stores, especially in Salvador, and pay with Bitcoin in a second. Okay, so it's more divisible, more fungible. Um, it's more, much more transparent. Does anybody know how much gold there is in Fort Knox? Do you know, Orlando? I have no idea. I know it's a lot, but I have no idea what I it don't is. Either. No one and has. An idea. And by the way, I also know gold hasn't moved a damn bit in ten years. Exactly. Why? Why? So we can we can talk about that, right? We can talk about why, but um, we don't even know how much gold there is in Fort Knox because the government won't let us go in and audit. So we have no idea. Bitcoin. Every single transaction on Bitcoin is public for the world to see. And you can go back to the first transaction ever. So when people yell about, oh, it's criminal and criminals use it, that's a load of crock. I'm sorry, because it's criminal, much. Criminal, criminals have been using money forever. Criminals use for... dollars. You know, you know what criminals use? Timber. Timber is a great money laundering uh, uh, system because there's timber futures. Nobody really knows the price of wood and so on. Bitcoin, literally, you can tell. And so when we had that um, the pipeline hack and people got the Bitcoin back, why? Because you can see where it's going. So you can tie wallets to different IP addresses if you really, really need to. Now, right. that goes against the government, the argument of some hardcore libertarians that say, well, you know, it's, um, it's totally anonymous. Bitcoin is transparent, but it is anonymous. So you don't know where the wallet is. Just don't be stupid. No, I'm not, you know, endorsing being, you know, being criminals here. Of course not. Use it as a way to store your wealth. So 21 million ever made. The more money we print, and we keep on printing it, um, and with no end in sight, uh, the uh, the better it is. And I'll I'll leave you kind of with this stat, and I'll, I'll let you ask me another question where you, wherever you want to go because I can talk about this for hours. But the way the government works, the way the way any economy works, modern economy, is that you have interest rates. Interest rates basically say, hey, if you leave your money in a bank, I will give you some sort of rate for keeping that money. And in return, I lend out uh, the, the money that you deposit with me, right? Um, and so when we lower interest rates, when interest rates are really, really low, like the checking, the savings account rates now are half a percent, you as an individual have no incentive to go to the bank and leave your money there. What do right. you do? You spend it, right? You, you go spend it. Uh, that increases the velocity of money and that keeps the economy going. When the economy gets too hot, the interest rates, the Federal Reserve increases interest rates um, and it slows down people's velocity because people are now saying, oh, I can get 3%, 5% in the bank. I'll leave it and get that return, get that yield. It also costs more to lend out. So you can borrow at, let's say, 10% or borrowing at 20%. If you're borrowing at 20%, anybody who has a credit card debt knows that yes. you have to pay a lot. Exactly. So why am I saying all this? The historic average rate of the federal, of, of our interest rates in the country have been around 3%. In the last 10 to 15 years, we really lowered the rates 
Um, first, we wanted to get the economy going. Then we had the great financial crisis. So we lowered the rates to keep the economy going and stimulate the economy. Then we tried raising the rates in 2018, I believe. It didn't go so well. The market, the stock market freaked out. We lowered the rates again. And then COVID came, right? So COVID really wrecked the economy. We kept the rates really low. We now accumulated $30 trillion, $30 trillion in debt. And if you raise the interest rates, okay, to more or less, um, you know, 3%, okay, average rates to have the economy chugging along without having to print money, that means that we have to pay in interest, the U.S. government, $1 trillion per year, more yeah. or less. That's a third of our budget. There is no chance no. that we can afford to do this. Right. So the only way to pay back your debt, if I owe you Orlando $100, right, and then the dollars become worth less, I can give you the $100, but they don't buy as much as when you lent it to me. So right. that's why when we talk about inflation, the government says it's transitory, it's transitory. I don't necessarily believe that they even want it to be transitory. They want to get rid, I think, I'm speculating here. And actually, it doesn't even matter what they want to do. The point is they're printing money. Inflation is going to go up. Your dollar is going to become less. Over time, you know, the U.S. dollar has lost 90% of its value. And because... Now we have Bitcoin, a digital gold. You can store your wealth there. And if you think about it from a five to 10 year perspective, you, all that volatility up and down, up and down crashes is noise in, over the course of five years. Because if you believe the dollar is going to crash, which I do, or, or at least not crash, but just you know, diminish in value, which yes, I Yes, I agree. You just need to find a safe harbor, right? To park your money in and save your purchasing power, not money, not dollars, purchasing power you know um let me say what, one more thing because i think this is so important for people to understand uh and many people really this is like when i talk to 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 folks um this is the number one thing that people misunderstand i think it's so 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 critical we have a lot of technological breakthroughs think about tesla like guys we have a self-driving vehicle in 2021 which pretty much drives itself. It's, it's amazing, right? We, and we're about to hit this world with crypto and uh, self-driving vehicles and AI, where we're gonna have skyrocketing innovation. We've got amazing technology. So what does technology do? It deflates the cost of certain items. So for example, you know, if you wanna, if you wanna buy and get a middle of the line TV, probably cost you 500 bucks. You wanted to get a middle of the line TV 10 years ago, probably cost you 500 bucks, but the TV today is much better than it was before, right? Oh, yeah. Or, yes. yeah, right. Or buying the old TV today will cost you $10, right? Because it's just technology has improved. So, on consumable goods, guy, please, this is, this is the most important thing, for, you know, uh, if to take away on consumable goods, things that we use, uh, technological products, clothes, if it doesn't include human labor, the costs will feel, they'll go up, but they're not going to, they'll feel low, right? They'll feel like affordable, but good luck trying to buy your next house, okay? Good luck. Good luck trying to enter into a capital asset. That's why we look at all these billionaires and we say, oh, wow, look, COVID, everyone got poor, they got rich. No, we made them rich by paying, by printing money. Right. We made them rich with our policies, because they were able to figure out how to store their money in investment uh, vehicles. So shirts, same while, price. While, while giving them tax havens, by the way. While giving them tax havens. I, look, I completely agree. But, you know, they know how to play the game. Yes. And that's the number one thing. Crypto allows you to play the game before the, the, the Wall Street and rich people play the game. And that's the first time we've de uh, democratized access to good investable assets for the masses before Wall Street, by the way. Good stuff, as always. Uh, Alex Chizik, by the way, head of listings for OKCoin.com. Go check it out. Download the app at OKCoin and uh, check out some of the uh, some of the different things that they can do there. Not only a great selection of coins, but also staking. So your opportunity, because that's kind of what we're talking about, Alex. That what people don't understand that while we're watching the dollar go down, those of us that are investing in the right. Uh, in the right properties like Ethereum or Bitcoin or 
or Matic or Star Atlas or those kind of things, we're watching our money grow, actually. Yeah. That's, that, that's the difference that those of us that have, especially if, let's say you started investing in, you know, er, late last year and going into 2021, and by now you are enjoying some major profits. Five X. Yeah. Three to five X your money. And easily yeah. your five X right now because, and, and so over the last year, the dollar's gone down. Over the last year, those of us that have been in crypto, you're way up and you're enjoying profits and you're pulling profits now and you're establishing something that is going to continue to grow down the line. I mean, look at look uh, look at Crow. Crow now has exploded to a point that if you stayed patient, you're there. Ethereum was like what seventeen hundred dollars ten months well, ago, yeah. and and also about three months ago when on the dip it went down back to seventeen fifty eighteen hundred. Now you're well over four thousand dollars. I mean. These are the different. This is the difference that's going on in this sphere compared to the reality that people are facing right now. They're watching their businesses go down. They're watching uh, businesses lose employees, and and we're watching the digital world is exploding. NFTs, smart contracts, all of these things, and and people aren't understanding that the people that are moving their businesses to the blockchains are the ones that are really increasing the value moving forward in this society. Yeah, absolutely. And look, this is one of the things that we're trying to do at OKCoin. Look, I'll just give a quick plug. We're an, we're an exchange. So we do four things. Every exchange has four things. Deposit, withdraw your money. Buy and sell different cryptocurrencies. Think of it as a store and you call, you're coming in and you're trying to say, oh, which toothpaste brand do I want? This one, this one, this one. This is the same thing for cryptos. We... we, we we really try to live by this mantra of personal sovereignty. And so we have two kind of products, They're different crypto assets that you can buy. And like you said, you can stake. Stake basically says, I'm going to buy a crypto asset. And for those that allow you to, you deposit them into the crypto asset savings account. And those different crypto assets, some pay 15%, some pay 10%, some pay, um, you know. Polkadot is 1764 Polygon is 1549, Algorand 1416, Tezos 1188, Stacks 10%, Miami Coin 280%. Some Miami of us Coin. Got, by the way, some of us got it at 430 also, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> and and it's true. And, the, and you're actually getting that rate. You saw the returns from that you're yeah. getting on it. Yeah. 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 It, it's paying off. And, and that's why you, you got to, I always tell people you got to, do your homework and and by the way, tell them about the podcast because sure. I think I think listening to your podcast is a great way for people to kind of get educated because people always ask always ask me what do I do? How do I find out about it? And I tell them you got to read, you got to you know try to follow up, try to find shows that are dedicated to. It. Now you got to watch out on YouTube because you got a lot of these YouTubers that are. Yeah. You know, they're, they're kind of sold out to certain things and they're yeah. kind of pushing products and all that instead of actually really talking about it. You know, you were on Altcoin Daily the other day. I think that's a fantastic show for anybody trying to learn about crypto because that's just a news based show. Mm -hmm. It just gives you the news so then you can make your own opinions after that. Yeah. I think a good that, look at fantastic what you said. I think a good rule of thumb is if you're going to YouTube and you see these crazy faces like, oh, 100% gains, the next, you know, stay, yeah, stay away. You, you have to be very careful. So, my, um, my co host, uh, Shimon, and I started this, uh, the podcast and the show about a year and a half ago for fun. Um, we do it on the side and we just, we would sit together and really push each other's thinking on investments and how we invest. And then we said, why don't we just start recording it? And what ended up happening was the, the beginning was a terrible, <laughs> but there's actually good information because we go back and it's a nice way to timestamp it. And we were like, oh my God, we were right there and we were right here and we're right. right. And so you, you have this, you have this track record of saying, we literally said some of the things that are happening today, you know, two years ago, just based on our understanding of technology investments. And again, this is what both of us have done for, you know, 15 to 20 years professionally at the highest levels. Um, and, and, and so we just started recording ourselves and bringing on guests the way you, you're doing it to, to talk to people, to experts in the field. 
And yeah, check out the show. There's an episode called, you know, you know, why invest in Bitcoin? And one of my friends asked about it and I, I made an episode, uh, especially for her, but for many other people. That's it's, great. It's, it's great for everybody. Yeah. It's Definitely. great for everyone. So it's why I invest in Bitcoin. We talk about crypto a lot, not because we're just such, you know, moon boys or fanboys of crypto, which we are, but it's because crypto brings this opportunity. And, and you know, and so just a touch on an OK coin, one of the a big mantra for us is the self-sovereignty. And so we try to give more of these earned products. I think we have the biggest earned selection in the US for all the other exchanges. And we don't charge a penny for earn, like zero. It's uh, it costs us money to run it actually in the background because we send cryptos back and forth to different protocols. You don't need to know all that. You do need to know that it's free for you, completely free. And the rates that we give aren't our rates. It's the rates of the market. So we pass it on completely to you. And if you compare us versus some of the other for the same assets, some of the other competitors like a Kraken or a Coinbase or a Gemini or even a Binance US, uh, you know, crypto.com, oh, we good. have much higher rates. Yeah, they take they take spread on those. We don't. And the other thing, when you trade, um, there are different ways to trade. But if you trade on the actual market, if you put a market order in, 0.1% fees, uh, which is by far the lowest. Like coin, you know, I, I won't speak ill of anyone else. I mean, we're all trying to build a better world, but um, it's just by far the lowest, uh, the lowest fees. And so it's just our way. We can, by the way, we can increase the fees, double our profits, and still be the lowest in the market, and we don't do it. And why don't we do it? Because we firmly believe, it starts with a CEO, Hong, um, that we want to give as much to the customer uh, a, a, as we can. I mean, we can't, it can't be free. It does cost a lot of money to run the platform. Um, but uh, uh, we, you know, the fees you, you'll see, the rates are the highest, the fees are the lowest in the market. So, so if you want a good selection, and my job at OKCoin, I have to find those nuggets like the Star Atlases. Yes. Atlas. So yeah, you're a fan. I, I'm a big fan of that team. I've seen some of the things that they're doing. Uh, I talk to Michael, the CEO, all the time. And it, they're just building a beautiful digital world, uh, a world beyond imagination, as they say. And it's true. 20 uh, cents. No. They just yeah. hit 20 cents. There we go. So I think we listed it at 8 cents. What is it now? 17, 18? Oh, it's 20. It just it's, did 20. There we go. So we listed it a few months ago at, uh, it was eight. Now it's 20, right? So that's, a, you know, one and a half uh, X there, right there. And just a uh, profit, not, you know, a two and a half X return. But Miami coin is another one. We really support um, what uh, this group city coins are doing in the mayor. mayor talk, finance talk to us. You know, I was going to ask you about that because I want to get two more questions in before sure. you go. <laughs> Miami coin. I know New York city is, uh, is on deck. I heard San Francisco is also uh, working on it. It's all uh, done by through <laughs> stack on top of Bitcoin uh, apparently. So explain a little bit of, about the concept and do you like it? Does it have a future? Cause I, I thought it was so forward thinking of Mayor Suarez to do this. Uh, and, and obviously, if it's going to help the city eliminate some of the taxes from the people, that would be absolutely phenomenal. If yeah. this, I think it's already produced like 21 million to this point or something like that. So the city obviously is doing something that it's really helping them. But overall, is us because I've got. You know, a nice bag of Miami coin, you know, staked on, on OK coin. So talk to me a little bit about the future, the token. Sure. What do you think? Yeah, look, I, I, I'll say any any token that's listed on OK coin, I stand behind. It's ultimately my job to bring good tokens. And if uh, God forbid I bring some shit coin onto our platform, <laughs> then I shouldn't have my job. <clears throat> and I and I stand behind it. My my bosses fire me, please. If if I bring a shit coin and it just it blows up in our faces, I I shouldn't be there. Um, I, I like to walk the walk if I'm talking the talk. Uh, <clears throat> so I think you know that that's one. So two is what does Miami Coin do? Miami Coin was an innovative approach to reimagining civic engagement by a group called City Coins, and I think they approached the mayor and they. The mayor said, wow, this is this is uh, amazing. Let's, let's try it out. And obviously, he's behind it. And what it does is, without going too deep into the mechanics, there are miners of the coin. So basically securing the network, the Miami coin blockchain. And people who mine, 70% uh, goes to people like you, Orlando, who are staking or holding the coins. You're also helping secure the chain. 30% <clears throat> goes to the city. So it's a way for the city to, if you support... Uh, you know, the, the, let's say a politician or the a mayor of Francis, you can 
do a few things. You can donate to him, right? You can donate to the city. You can uh, go knocking on doors and be a community organizer. This gives you another avenue. It says, hey, buy this coin. Why is it good? Because with, with the donation, you just give it off. With buying a coin, it's like giving a donation, but you also get to see the upside. So if more people also believe in Mayor Suarez, right, then they will buy the coins, take the coins. It will incentivize more mining. Mining goes, revenue goes to the city. So it's an interesting game theory, economic perspective of call it municipal bonds reimagined or civic engagement reimagined. And if Mayor Suarez starts doing poor policies, you better believe this coin will be sold off and the city will get much less money. I got you. It incentivizes politicians to listen to a new constituency that hasn't been able to be vocal before, right? Right. And, uh, when your coin comes out, and it's already it just launched, and I think there'll be more some of this and so on, you're going to be able to see competition between cities for policy competitions between cities. And that's why I am a fan of the project. Uh, I'm not saying to go sell or buy. Please do your own research. I'm not, again, any coin. Always. Coin, always. Yeah, always, always do your own research. Never listen to anyone, including myself. <laughs> um, but uh, again, I stand behind all the projects. So I, I'm naturally a fan of all the coins that are on OK Coins. So I'm a fan of City Coins. Um, it, you will be able to see, you know, arbitrage between the city. Let's say you don't like what San Francisco is doing. The value of that coin falls and value of Miami goes up. Well, the politicians in San Francisco can be like, oh, my God, you know, Miami is getting millions of dollars, not taxable, just millions of dollars to the city. We're getting nothing. What are they doing that we're not doing? Hey, maybe we should do the same thing. Right. I got you. Right. It's it's phenomenal. Yeah, I love it. I love it. It'll create competition between them. And and hopefully, you know, we have a we have such a progressive mayor that, you know, hopefully that'll keep us with the edge. And I love that he wants to bring miners down and and he understands that they need, obviously, the natural energy and all of that. because We want to stay away from from gas and all that other stuff that's going on. One other thing. Sure. This is a weird. Now, it doesn't bother me because I don't live there. But we have this. This show is listened and watched by people all over the world and all over our country, dude. What's up with New York, man? Like they only get Coinbase. They can't get okay. Like I have lots of listeners that I've gotten Miami Coin already, and they've staked and they've gotten Star yeah. Atlas. But some of my listeners in New York are like, I can't get OK Coins, and like they know. can't get a whole bunch of them. They can't get Voyager, and they can't get uh, Crypto.com or whatever. Any of these Binance, they can't. What's up with New York? That's so weird. Yeah. Look, so New York, um, New York DFS, which is the Department of Financial Services, is has rules and regs in place. And they have a thing called the BIT license. BIT license um, basically says you're able to operate in New York and you have additional requirements of um, uh, reporting requirements and so on. You know, it's their way to protect um, the citizens of New York. And I, I can't, you know, we're working actively, uh, obviously, as is everyone. Uh, they're hurting and, uh, They're hurting their citizens is what they're doing. Look, I, I will, I will, no comment on, on what New York uh, is doing or not. But I will, I will say this, I will say this, that. Smart. <laughs> yeah, that's your, that's, that's your, look, some people like my, my, much more regulation uh, friendly, if you will. Uh, some people are less regulation friendly. I'm not here to say one way or the other, but I will say this, that a project like City Coins, hopefully, right? I, I don't know how it's going to work out. I really don't. But the promise is that it will create exactly these discussions of saying, hey, we've done, it could be bit license. It could be crime. It could be, you know, it could be anything. It could be, hey, we want to use our taxes for this or this, or we want to raise real estate taxes and lower sales taxes. It doesn't matter. The point is that... Uh, the education it, part of it, that they get to learn what crypto is about and how they, how they can benefit from it and they can understand exactly. it because uh, the, the, new, the new bill that was just passed, you know, <laughs> they're, they, they want to charge everybody that, that handles crypto like if they're, uh, they're, they're a dealer and that's just, you know, absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, you're, you're talking you're about the, the, the retailer, yeah. the miners. Oh, yeah, the, the, from the new. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's just, you know, and that, that comes from ignorance. It's ignorance. Yeah, that, that, that comes from, 
I mean, Alex, what? Maybe less than 5% of the world knows what the hell crypto is. Maybe 70% has heard of Bitcoin, but they don't know what the hell Bitcoin is as it is, right? What, what, what are we talking about? Maybe 5% of the world knows what Bitcoin what, uh, what probably. is. Probably. It's, 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 becoming, it's becoming bigger now, but I'm, here, I'm encouraged. There, is, there are politicians out there, both on a national level, but more yes. importantly, local. Support your local politicians. There is a woman I used to, uh, I would help and buy. Her name is Margaret Croak. She's in Illinois. Fantastic young woman, young representative who's been pushing crypto bills in Illinois. There are similar uh, folks in you know, pretty much every state. Uh, let me wrap with the following. I think this is um, sure. like, it, it, you know, now that we're coming up on, uh, on Thanksgiving, uh, we'll kind of wrap it with a very patriotic, uh, pro-American in this case, message. Is if you're a patriot of the U.S., okay, the U.S. is like the perfect country where crypto should take off and all the politicians right. yeah all the politicians that speak out against it fundament are either doing it because of some uh, they're tied to some special interests yes or because they don't understand because if they really are patriotic about the us the reason why we can enjoy we have our own set of problems but i believe <coughs> fully the reason why we can enjoy our freedoms is because of the federalist system in the U.S. So basically it means the central government, the federal government, is, uh, compared to the other countries, a weaker federal government, and the power goes off to the states, right? So if there's the economy between the, the federal government and the states, you cannot have a president come in and do whatever they want willy-nilly. They go to the court. Some states say yes. Some states say no. It moves us really slowly, Right. We move really slowly. But man, when we move, it's a it's a debated, painful thought out process. But that's a feature. Right. Not a bug, because you cannot have a dictator come in, a president come in and say, we're going to screw all these rules and we're going to do X, Y, Z. The system won't let him. We've decentralized our system of governance. What is crypto and what is Bitcoin? It's a decentralized Exactly. System of governance. So Bitcoin specifically moves really slowly. It's a feature, not a bug. To make a change in Bitcoin is like making a change to the Constitution. You, we, like we have to be sure, right, that this is the change. And it takes a lot of momentum to change it because the system is so anti-fragile. And so I really believe in the long term, and I'm, and I'm around a lot of the, some of the political workings and uh, like I, I live in D.C., I see there's a blockchain association, there is a digital chamber of digital Congress, uh, commerce, excuse me, which uh, with a woman leading it called Perry on Boring. They're very good in terms of pushing that agenda and starting to talk to politicians. But I think politicians will appreciate the build politicians that are truly patriotic, appreciate. Uh, and, and by the way, like the uh, chairman, chairmen and women of the Fed and so on, anybody in government that appreciates what this country is appreciates the constitution has to appreciate crypto they're one and the same it's just it's just a different lens and the same exact approach decentralized system of governance that gives power or as much power as they can to the people to the sovereign individual to preserve uh, individual freedoms that's it that I'm is with you. that is america by the way if we were smart when China was uh, kicking out miners, we should have said, yeah, hey, come on down. Let's go. Texas Texas was smart. I know. That's exactly I know. what Texas did. I, I was actually surprised that Ted Cruz was so smart about, you know, because there aren't a lot of those guys. You know what I mean? Because I don't think, obviously, Biden understands it. Trump doesn't definitely understand it. Trump does not understand it. He, he's it. like in 1950 still. So uh, th there's not a lot of presidents. So it's we have to count on some of these senators and congressmen that actually are invested in crypto and understand it to kind of hopefully fix, you know, what's going on. Decentralized system. Exactly. Yeah. This is exactly it. And it's work and it works. It works no, like we no. were able to endure it because it works. Yep, yeah, I'm with you. Alex, man, great conversation. Right. I can I can continue for a couple of hours. <laughs> I'm sure you can too. It's been really informative for the folks. And you know, I hope we I hope we can do it again and, and bring you on. Because I think this is a process that we have to educate people so they can take advantage of it and they can free themselves too at the same time. Because yeah. I think that's what that's what crypto is going to be. It's going to be a liberating thing that you're not going to be tied down by the government 
in so many different ways financially. It's really going to open up a lot of avenues for all of us. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to having more conversations sure. with you folks. Download OK Coin. Go to your app store. Check it out. Uh, you can stake so many different coins, like uh, Miami Coin. You can get 280 uh, percent. I can post a link also, so you can get the fifty dollars free of Please. base. It's on my it's on my uh, Twitter page. I'll repost that uh, that tweet there, so you guys can check it out on my uh, page at Big O Show. And one more time, the podcast. It's the host. Uh, he's the host of the Hardcore Finance Show. So look for it. It's uh, wherever you get your podcast. The Hardcore Finance Show with Alex Chizik, and you can follow him also on Twitter and follow OK Coin also on Twitter. Absolutely. Great stuff, my brother. I look forward to doing it again, my man. Pleasure. Pleasure. Pleasure is all Thank my you, thanks for having me on. You got it. You're the best. Appreciate Bye, you. Bro. Show!